Hi guys. Good afternoon. How you doing? Good. Tom, you've known uh, Aaron Rodgers on and off the field now, I guess, competed against him not that many times, only a handful of times. Now. Yeah. Um, just for you, even though you're not going against the other quarterback, right, you're preparing for the Green Bay defense, is there still something about playing one of the best in the game? Yeah, for sure. He's an amazing player. Has been for a long time, so I love watching him play. And uh, you know he's from California too, so I feel like we always have a little bit of a connection. He's an older guy now. Um, he's been a great player in the same place for a long time, so there definitely has some challenges with that. And um, but he's navigated them pretty well, and he's done a great job. Leads the team, and you know they've won a lot of games since he's been there. You know, and I knew Brett pretty well. You know, those two guys are pretty two great quarterbacks for a long period of time in one place. He said he doesn't want to play until age 45, but he had a change of heart that he'd be able to physically? I don't know. It's up to him. Kind of, you talked about the, the situation of receiver and guys coming and going and the yep. uncertainty of who you're throwing to. Do you think that will be better on Sunday or is that something you're just going to have to do? I think that, um, you know, part of the job is to deal with, you know, different people being in and, and uh, you know, it's, it's part of the demolition derby that, game that we play you know guys are in and out and you just got to adjust within the game and certain weeks you know you you start a certain way and it doesn't end the way that it started guys get injured and, you know look at Dallas game you know Mike went out Chris went out and uh, Julio went out um, Donnie went out you know you're ending the game in a totally different place than you know you would have started you put together a game plan thinking all those guys in there and you play to the strengths but you got to adjust throughout the game so you know, sometimes when you know guys aren't going to be out there during the week, you know, you can plan for it. Other times you have to adjust in the game. So every team deals with it. You know, we lost Mike, you know, in the third quarter, last game, fourth quarter. They lost their corner. You know, a lot of a lot of things change. So, you know, you just got to try to win the game however you can win it. And uh, fortunately, our defense is playing great football, and we'll do the best we can do on offense. Tom, what do you like about your new teammate, Cole Beasley? And did you know that he was hitting you up trying to get on the team? You know, I've watched him a long time too. I, I've, um, you know, he's been around a long time, and and uh, you know, I've watched him play, competed against him. He's been on the other team, I think at Dallas once, um, at Buffalo quite a few times. He's a great player. I, I really, uh, you know, I think he's a great player. Um, what did you say? Today at practice, um, today at practice, like we saw you fidgeting, like with your arm, and I know you talked about your finger. Is that just annoying, or where? How are you feeling with that right now? Great. I feel great. Um, it's football season, so, yep. What about the uh, protection? It seems like you've been getting some pretty good protection despite yeah. having new guys, you know, coming in and yep. just starting. Yeah, I've been getting great protection. Uh, the guys up front have been competing very hard. I think that's part of why we run the ball so well. We've been able to run it a bunch of times. Those guys up front have done a, a great job kind of coming together, taking the coaching and putting their, you know, all, all they can into what they're doing. And um, it's really allowed us to do some – Good things on offense, um, but it's you know it always starts with offensive line. What those guys are able to do, how they're able to control the line of scrimmage, and you know it's a big challenge to you know like last week's front. That's a great front. This week a very different front, but you know great pass rushers. One of the best inside players we'll face all year, Kenny Clark. Um, but Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary are great rushers. So again, it's another big challenge, but you know we got to meet it. Every week's something different, you know. It's in the NFL. It's it's tough, you know. Every week you're going against somebody's best, and yeah, you just got to try to figure out a way. You mentioned on your podcast that your intense desire for perfection sometimes leads you to have moments of frustration, you know, breaking tablets and things like that. Um, how do you kind of get past that? And, and after a performance, where you kind of have to accept, okay, that wasn't my personal best, but it was my the best I could do on this day, or this was the best we could do on this day. Yeah, I could, you know, I can always do better. I can always obviously do better as a quarterback and, and um, yeah, not let my emotions get the best of me. Sometimes they do. You know, it's a emotional sport. It's an emotional game. Um, and we're all out there trying to do the best we could do. And you're right. It's I think there's a frustrating part I think for all of us when you get a little older and you expect it a certain way and it doesn't go exactly the way you want. So, But that's, that's it. That's the way it is. And... Um, you know, I got to do a good job as a leader to be
be at my best, you know, regardless of how I feel about a certain situation. Is it part of you, though, that kind of wants to hold on to that? Because that, I mean, that's what gets you coming back here every single day, right? Chasing that perfection. Yeah, always. I mean, there's a part of it for all of us that we just, you know, you want it to be the best you could be, really not just for yourself, but for everyone around you, for the whole team. Everyone's counting on you to be, you know, a great player. And, uh, you know, we got to reach a higher level on offense. That's part of what our responsibility is. I think fans have gotten spoiled over the last couple of years uh, seeing you guys put up 30 plus points, you know, every week. Uh, is it, you just kind of look at the situation now as it's, it's building, and it's not matter really what you do at the beginning, but here at the end. Yeah, I think we're gotta, you know, we're obviously scoring points is a challenge for every team, you know. Um, you know, in order to score points, you have to do things consistently well down the field. You know, you got to be on the same page, communication, and ultimately the game is about making plays and, you know, the matchups you have. You know, you got to win your matchup. You know, you're not going to score points if you turn the ball over. We did that to start the Saint game. We did it on the second drive. We stopped on the fourth and one. So you can't score points if you fumble the ball, and you can't score points if you miss a fourth and one. So the only way to score is to do things, you know, better and more consistently over the course of the drive all the way down in the red area and then ultimately put the ball in the end zone. So set and learn for field goals, you're not going to score a lot of points. you got to be good in the red area. But in order to be good in the red area, you got to be good on third down. In order to be good on third down, you got to be good on first and second down. In order to be good on first and second down, you need good, you know, play by your special teams and, you know, to get good field position. And then you need good defensive football. So it's a complimentary game. And I think as we keep going throughout the course of the season, obviously the goal is to score as many points as we can. And, um, you know, we know that we're going to have to do a better job than what we've done. And, you know, we're going to work hard to get there. And then Pinellas County uh, adopted the TB12 method. What kind of impact do you think it's going to have on the school system over there? You know, I think amazing, you know, I, I, I feel like everything I've learned over the course of 23 years in football has and will allow me to continue to help people in different ways. You know, the things I've learned have been a huge benefit to me. And I realize that, you know, there are systems that are broken and you'd like to try to improve them the best way you can by giving people the knowledge that has allowed me to be successful. So I think a big part of my future life will be that as well, you know, and I think Unfortunately, like everything else, there's a lot of money made in the old system, and it's hard because, you know, I think preventative care, preventative maintenance of your body is a challenge because it takes time and energy. But I think starting young is really important and educating people on what works as opposed to what the way things have always been. And I think the way things have always been will always result in basically the same outcomes for people. And I think what I've tried to do is challenge that norm by performing, you know, over a long period of time, but I've really done it in a way that's um, I'd say been unique and that I've tried to, you know, allow my teammates to um, learn as well as, you know, tens of thousands of other people that, you know, have kind of uh, been educated and adopted what, you know, a different type of uh, belief system. Tom, there's been a lot of talk in Green Bay just with Aaron Rodgers and Hip, having young receivers, new receivers, what his responsibility is to bring them along. Yep. I'm curious to get your take. Do you believe that's kind of a fair expectation of quarterbacks now? I think every, you know, it's it's a good question. You know, what's your responsibility as a quarterback? Um, I'm sure it's different for all quarterbacks what their responsibilities are. So I think as an older player, you know, you've got to. It it really comes down and speaks to ultimately what the goal is to win the game and to win the game you got to score points and this goes back to a lot of things we talked about. How do you score points with young receivers? I don't know, man. A lot of it's up to the young receivers what they're able to do. You know, I've been in situations with a lot of young players, and it's a challenge because, you know, they don't have the experience, but maybe they have a lot of other things. So we're all challenged, you know. It's, I think that's just the reality of playing sports and being in football. Every team is challenged with different things, and some guys have young, let's say, receivers, but veteran secondaries. Some teams have a veteran receivers and a young secondary, or you may have a veteran secondary and young linebackers. I mean, not a lot of teams are going to have veterans at every position that are healthy all year. So you just got to try to keep managing it the best way you can. If you're the quarterback, you know, try to figure out how to win the game because that's why we're all here. Tom, can you talk about how the conversation started to have your, ring, your Super Bowl rings at the World Cup? Yeah, a friend of mine um, is uh, asked me, you know, and I had visited um, Qatar a couple times and really enjoyed it. And there's a great sports museum there and – wanted to allow a lot of the people that are going to be there to see kind of American football and the impact it's had on all of our lives and how great of a sport it is. And for them to see kind of what we play for, I thought would be a really cool thing. Is it 
nerve-wracking sending those things so far away? I mean, what kind of insurance do you have on that? I know. Yes. I just, you know, I trust people, so I'm like, go for it. You know, don't lose it. And, you know, here, sign this. So I'm kind of loose with things like that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.